Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Newman, and today we're going to grade Weekly Review 2.4. So make sure you have the right Weekly Review. This is Weekly Review 2.4, so that's quarter two, week four. So we're already over halfway through quarter two. Make sure your name is on it, and uh, let's grade Let's grade this. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions or concerns or any mistakes that I might have made. Please let me know. All right. All right. Uh, number one, let's get started. It says, which statement is true about the equation below? 28 equals 4 times 7. Or another way I can say this is 28 is 4 times as many as 7. So 28 is, that's what I'm looking for. Or it could, you could read it backwards and say 7 times 4 is 28. Or 4 times as many as 7 is 28. So this uh, equal sign, we can just say the word is. That's what you got to keep in mind, is. All right, 7 times as many is 4. That would be like saying 7 times 28 equals 4, and that's definitely not true. 28 is 4 more than 7. That's like saying 28 is, 28 equals 4 more than 7. Nope, that would definitely not true. 28 is 4 times as many as 7. Yes, 28 is 4 times as many as 7. That's what we're looking for. So that is my answer. And D, 4 times as many as 28, that's 4 times 28, and then that is 7. You can definitely see that is not true. So the answer is D. All right, complete each equation to make these sentences true. Um, anytime I'm dealing with uh, division here, I like to do these backwards and just turn them around to multiplication. So I just say 56 times something is 560. Well, these values just grew by one place value larger, so we're just multiplying by 10. And if you read it uh, from left to right, 560 divided by 10 is 56. But remember, you can always do division backwards with multiplication just to check it. 56 times 10 is 560. 560 divided by 10 is 56. Uh, 93 times 10, that would just be 930. Pretty easy. All right. Remember, anytime you multiply things by 10, these values just get one place value bigger, one place value bigger. So the tens place would move to the hundreds place. The ones place would move to the tens place, and you have to add a zero in the ones place. All right, number three. It says choose a number that when rounded to the nearest thousand would not, not round to 24,000. Okay, so this would definitely round to 24,000. You guys should be good at rounding. Uh, this would round up to 24,000, B, letter B. Uh, 23 would also round up to 24,000. And the letter D would round up to, uh, look at the hundreds place, 8 would make the 4 round up to 25,000. 25,000. So that is your answer, which one is not rounded to 24,000. Um, it's just good to make sure you are looking at the right place that tells you where to round. So if we're rounding, if we're rounding the thousands place, um, if we're rounding the thousands place, I like to underline this, I guess, and then circle this number. This is the value that I'm circling tells you the answer uh, to the thousands place. Do we round up or do we round down? So make sure you follow your rounding rules. Number four, Monica collects, step, collects stamps. She uses 216 stamps in her collection. She wants to organize stamps in her in a book so that each page has eight stamps. How many pages will she need for all of her stamps? So you're taking this many stamps and organizing them in groups of eight to go on uh, a page in her stamp book. So 216 divided by eight, that's the equation that I'm doing. 216 divided by eight equals N. I am going to use a, um, a pretty simple area model. Uh, I'm going to use an area model to solve this. So... I don't know how many times 8 can fit into 216, but I can definitely find a number that's close. If I do my multiples of 8, um, 8 times 2 is 16, and I always want to look at these two digits first, 21. If I do 8 times 3, that's 24. That's going to be too big, so I'm not going to use 16, but I am going to use 160 to break my first model up here, my first box of my area. So 8 times what is 160? That's 8 times 20 is 160. Now what do I have left over? Well, I need to subtract and see. 
216 minus 160 to see what I have left over here. I'm going to have to do some regrouping. Not a big deal. 56. And is this number a multiple of 8? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to put that in this box right here. And what times 8 is 56? That is 7. So 20 and 7 is my quotient. So n equals 27. This is a word problem, so I'm going to label it. And this will be pages. If you read the problem, we're looking for pages. So it's 27 pages. I think we already did that one together anyways. Number 5, list all the factor pairs of 45. I'm going to do a t-chart. Here's all the factor pairs of 45. I always start with 1 and the number itself. 1 times 45, those two are factors. Uh, then 3 times 15. If you left uh, two of them out, that's probably the two you did not know were factors. But yes, 3 times 15 is 45. And the last pair is 5 times 9. So how many factors does 45 have? It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors. 6 factors. And here's all 6 factors right there. Remember factors, factors, think of, factors, think of few. They do run out. You can always find all the factors, but you cannot find all the multiples, okay? All right, number six, Luke has $132. He has four envelopes to help him keep track of his money. He splits the money evenly in the envelopes. So that means he's going to take this money and put it in groups of four, equal groups of four. How much money is in each envelope? I'm going to write an equation, 132 divided by 4 equals n. Um, let's figure out what this is. I'm going to do an area model, and I'm going to break up 132 into something that's a little easier to work with. So think of your multiples of 4. I always look at these first two digits first. Uh, 4 times 2 would be 8. I can probably get a little closer. 4 times 3 is 12. So since this is a number in the hundreds place, I'm not going to use 12. I'm going to use 120 because that's just 4 times 30. 4 times 30 is 120. Well, what's left over from my, uh, from my big number there, my dividend? So let's see, 132 minus 120, 2, 12, 0. So just 12 is left over. Is this number a multiple of 4? Yes, it is. So I can just put 12 in this box. And 4 times 3 would be 12, no remainders. That's awesome. So my answer is 30 plus 3. So how much money is in each envelope? N equals, I'm going to put a dollar sign, $33. $33. All right. Very nice. I'm hoping division with area models is getting a little easier for you. We are going to look at some different strategies this week, but um, I do want you to learn this strategy. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a really good strategy. It's easy to do. Um, I wouldn't recommend it when you have a very large number here, like if you have a number in the thousands place or ten thousands place, but a two-digit, three-digit uh, dividend, it's a great strategy to use area models with division. Just think of an area model, but you have to do it backwards. You get the area, then you either get the length or width, and then you're looking for the other length or width. Okay? Number seven, a ticket to a Selena Gomez concert costs $32. How much will it cost for a family of 12? Now, you are not dividing this. This is a multiplication problem, because if all 12 members of the family are going, that's 12 times 32. So 32 times 12. I'm just going to do an area model for this. I'm just going to draw a generic model that kind of would represent this problem. I'm going to break up 30 and 2. That represents that factor, 30 and 2, 30 plus 2. And then I'm going to break up 12 to 10 and 2. So in this box will be 10 times 30, which is 300. In this box will be 10 times 2. That would be the length, that would be the width. 10 times 2 is 20. In this box, the length is 2, the width is 30, so that's 30 times 2, which is 60. In this box, which is my smallest box, it's a 2 by 2, 2 times 2, which is 4. I'm just going to add up all these partial products. 300 plus 20 plus 60 plus 4. Stack those up using the standard algorithm of addition. And I get $384. That is money. So that's my answer. $384. That's how much it would cost for the whole family to go to this Selena Gomez concert. All right, number eight. It says, Katie found the product. Product. You guys remember what that word is? Product. That means the answer to a multiplication problem. 15 and 24. That means 15 times 24. 
Um, she used the partial products algorithm. That's basically these right here without the area model. And most of you guys can probably do this without an area model. So here are her partial products. Okay. And you could do an area model to see, uh, to check this if you'd like, but you don't need one. Um, it's always good to refer back to that if you get confused though. Do you agree or disagree with her product for 15 times 24? Well, it's always good to kind of estimate this. Um, you could definitely estimate this. I'm going to just round this to 15 times 20. 15 times 20. Well, 15 times 2 is 30. And then uh, another 0 would be 300. So it's relatively close. Her answer is close, 270. But let's see if, even when you add these up, um, yep, she get, I get 270. So it's a reasonable estimation. It's reasonable. Um, let's see if she made any, mista any mistakes. So I'm just going to come over here and kind of do this problem again. So 4 times 5 would be 20, and then 4 times 10 would be 40. So these two look good, 20 and 40. Let me kind of erase these check marks here. Back up a little bit. Here we go. So 15 times 24. 4 times 5 is 20. So we got this partial product. And we're going to take the 4 and multiply it by the 10, which is 40. We have this partial product. So those two look good. So we already multiplied the 4. I'm just going to cross it out. And now I'm going to multiply 15 by 20. So 20 times 5 is 100. Now look what uh, Katie put. She put 10. She put 10, and that should be 100. So she left a 0 off, which is a very common mistake to do. So she left a 0 off in that partial product. Um, and then 20 times 10 would be 200. If you add that up, 0, 6, 360. It's still very close, but she did make a mistake. She is 1... Um, She's at least 100, almost 100 off there in her answer. So 360, not 270. So that is her mistake. I disagree. I disagree. Okay. All right. And then you could just, if you want to explain that, or you can just work it out and say, hey, she should have put 100 instead of 10. All right. So that's the first page. On to the second page. Okay, page two. This is page two of your weekly review. It actually comes from lesson 36 in Zern in mission three. Some of you guys are getting close, but you will eventually have this in Zern on lesson 36. So I'm going to make this a little quicker because I don't want this video lasting 30, 40 minutes. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Remember, you can always pause, go back, rewind, or if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. All right, number one, it says each of the two models are pictured below. If you look at these, these models represent the exact same thing. This is just using a grid, and this is not using a grid. But you can easily count these squares here, these units, and you say, okay, this is 10 units, this is 2 units, this is uh, the length here is 3 units, and the length here is 10 units. So it's the same thing. All right, so this model just shows uh, 10 plus 2, which is 12 times 10 plus 3, which is 13. So it's just 12 times 13. All right, it says write the expressions that determine the area of the four smaller rectangles. Well, I'm just going to write the expressions inside the box here. These are the same thing, so I don't need to do it twice. The expressions for uh, the area of this box would be 10 times 3. Okay, or we can do, actually, let's write, I'm going to write this number first. I'm going to do the length first. 3 times 10. It doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do that first because it's going to go better with uh, part B. And then I'm going to go down uh, over to, I'm going to go across and go ahead and just do both of the, we'll do the length and width of this box and the length and width of this box, which this will be uh, 3 times 2 in this box. These are expressions, by the way, not equations. I don't have to put an answer when it asks for an expression. This is an expression. If you put the answer, it's okay, but it does say write the expressions. All right, now I'm going to go down to this, this box here. Um, we have a 10. The length is 10. The width is 10. So this is 10 times 10. In this uh, long rectangular box here, we have 10 by 2. The length is 10. The width is 2. 
So 10 times 2 in that box. So there are the four expressions that represent the four smaller rectangles. There they are. Okay, And you can write them. Uh, you, then you don't have to do this in any particular order, but you do have to write have the right expressions for the boxes. And if you just stack them up over here, which is fine too, 3 times 10, 3 times 2, and then 10 times 10, and 10 times 2. That's fine too. All right, part B, it says now use the distributive property. So if you didn't want to do an area model, you can just do this distributive property. This is the same problem as it is up here, uh, 13 times 12. So we're going to do, you can just look up here at your expressions to figure out what these are. So we're going to do 3 times 10, then 3 times 2. And it doesn't matter if you reverse those because you can get away with that in uh, multiplication and addition. So you can put a 2 there or a 10 there. Here, now we're multiplying the 10 first. So 10 times 10 and then 10 times 2. Same problem. Same problem. But you can reverse these two and you can reverse these two. All right, and then this is just an area model. Record the partial products and solve. So 17 times 34. So I'm going to break this problem up. Um, I'm going to put... Uh, 17 here at the top, that's going to be 10, that's going to be 7. And if you look at the way this is uh, drawn, this box, they actually put the big line here. So I'm going to put 30 here and I'm going to put 4 there. It doesn't really matter, but it does go with the box better. It's still going to be 34, but look, this is the longer line, this is the shorter line. So that's why I put 30 there and 4 there. But it really doesn't matter. If you didn't, if you put 30 up here or 4 there, it's still fine. It's not going to change the answer. All right, 10 times 4 would be 40. Here we have 4 times uh, 4 times 7. 4 times 7 is 28. In this box, we have 30 times 10. That's our largest box, which is 300. In this box here, this box here, we have 30 times 7. Length is 30 with the 7. So 30 by 7 would be 200. Uh, 10. I'm just going to stack these up here. It uh, doesn't really matter the order you do it in. So 300, and then 210, and then 40, and then 28. 28. And then let's add all of these up. So ones place, we have an 8, and then a 7 in the tens place, and then in the hundreds place, we have a 5. 578 is my answer. All right, that's the end of page 2. Okay, draw an area model to represent the following expressions. Record the partial products vertically and solve. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw an area model. And these are going to be pretty generic models. I'm just going to go ahead and cut these like that. This could You could use this for pretty much every uh, multiplication area model. So 45 times 18. So 40 and then 5 and then 18 would be 10 plus 8. Inside this box we have 400. Inside this box we have 50. Inside this box we have 8 times 40 which is 320. Don't forget that zero. Inside this box 8 times 5 which is 40. Let's add these partial products because that's what it says. So for, oh, let me start up here a little higher, 400 plus 320 plus 50, 50 plus 40. Okay, kind of round out of room here. Actually, let me, I'm just going to stack it up over here where I've got a little bit more room. There we go, 400, 320, 50, and 40. Okay. So 0 in the 1's place, we have 9, 10, 11, 10's, 11, 10's, so that's 110. And 100's place, we have 400, 300, another 100, so that's 800. 810 is my product, 810. 810 is my product here. Now, if you notice these two problems here, this is 45 times 18, this is 45 times 19, so... Uh, if you notice this, it's just uh, we're just multiplying 45 one more time between number 3 and number 4. So basically, if you add 45 to this, you should get this answer. So I actually should know this before I do it. It should be 855. If I add 45 to that, that's what I should get. But I'm still going to work it out 
because that's what the directions say. So, But you could definitely get away with that if you needed to save some time. All right, so we have 40 plus 5 and then 10 plus 9, 19. All right, 4 times 10 is 400. Uh, 10 times 5 is, oops, not 40, 50. 9 times 40, that's 360. And then 9 times 5, which is 45. All right, let's stack these up. We have 400 plus 360 and then 50 and 45. Okay, we have a 5 in the 1's place, 10's place. I'm going to group the 6 and 4 together because that makes 10. And then 5 would be 15 10's. And uh, we have 8. 855, just like I thought. So that is correct. 855. All right, uh, this time it says visualize. The directions change. So visualize the area model and solve the following uh, numerically using four partial products. You may sketch an area model if it helps. So if you drew an area model, that's fine, but this is saying, hey, you don't have to draw an area model. Some of you may be pretty good at this without having to do an area model. That's always an option if you need to save time. So I do like to stack these problems up, though. I think that helps me figure out what the partial products are. So... I'm just going to record them here and add them up. So 7 times, or 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is uh, 14. And then 2 times 40, which is 80. And then I move over here. I'm already multiplied the 2, so I move over here to this 1. But it's not a 1, it's a 10. So 10 times 7 is 70. And then 10 times 4 is 4, excuse me, 10 times 40, 10 times 40 is 400. So let's add these numbers up. We have a 4 in the 1's place. Um, 8 and 7 make 15, plus one more makes 16 10's. And then we have a 5 in the 100's place. So 564 is what I got. Let's do this one. 23 times 93. 93 times 23. And I just like putting the, the larger number on top. You don't have to do that. I just like doing it. Just what I, it's my preference, but you don't have to do that. 3 times 3 is going to be, and I'll just put these down over here to the side, which is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And 3 times 90, 3 times 90 is 270. So 3 times 3, 3 times 90. The 3 has been multiplied. I'm going to cross it out. And then we have three times, excuse me, not three. This is a two, but it's in the tens place, so it's a 20. 20 times three, 20 times three is 60, I believe. And then 20 times 90. Now that's two zeros, so I'm going to go and put those zeros in. 20 times 90, and then two times nine is actually 18. So that's 1,800. Don't forget that that number has two zeros in it. So we have a 9 in the 1's place, uh, 7 and 6 make 13 10's, and then in the 100's place I have a 2 and an 8, which is 10, plus one more is 11 hundreds, and then that's 2,139, 2,139. Okay, any questions about that? And it's always, uh, you can always come over here and say, okay, let me write this 20 times 90. Let me see what that looks like. 20 times 90. You can always put that on the side here so you can see, oh, there's two zeros, so I need two zeros in my product there. You can always, um, always do that on the side. I would definitely recommend it if you get in the habit of leaving off a zero. Write these on the side. So this one would be, what, 3 times 90 for this one? 3 times 90. And this one was 3 times 3. There you go. And you can see exactly how you got those products. All right. Uh, just to save time, though, I'm not going to do that. 23 times 11. Let's go ahead and do that. So 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, 1 times 20 is 20. 10. Go ahead and cross that out. Now we have 10 times 3, which is 30. And then 10 times 20 is 200. This one's pretty easy. So a 3 in the 1's place, a 5 in the 10's place, a 2 in the 100's place. So 253. And lastly, let's go ahead and do this one. 
This is 23 times 22. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2, um, well, it's not 2 times 2, sorry. 2 times uh, 20. 2 times 20 is 40. Let's cross that out. And then we have 20. 20 times 3, which is 60. And then uh, 20 times 20, which is 400. So a 6 in the 1's place, a 10 in the 10's place, 10 10's, and then a 5 in the 100's place. So 506 is what I got for number 8. Okay, on to the last page. Okay, boys and girls, this is the last page of your weekly review 2.4. So just a few questions to do, and then we're done. It says, number 1, solve 26 times 34 using 4 partial products and then 2 partial products. Remember to think in terms of units as you solve. Write the expression to find the area of each smaller rectangle in the area model. So notice this is the same problem, same problem, but here we're going to use 4 partial products, and here we're just going to use 2 partial products. So when you guys get, when you guys are becoming really good at multiplying, um, you can definitely use two partial products instead of four partial products. It goes a lot faster. So I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So you can always look. They actually wrote um, the number, the units that you're multiplying here on the right-hand side. So you can just look at that. Or you can come over here to the box and look at that. So 6 1 times 4 1s, that's this box right here. 6 1s times 4 1s, and that's 24. So you can uh, you don't have to put it in the box, but I'm just going to show you where they got it. This is 6 1s times 3 10s. That's this box right here. 6 1s times 3 10s is 30. That's 180. So 180 right there. And then 2 10s times 4 1s. Here's two tens is 20, and then four ones is right here, and that's 80. That's going to be 80. And then in this box right here, we have two tens times three tens, two tens times three tens, which is going to be 600. So 600. Now, if you did this with um, just two partial products, here you're going to multiply. You can see 634 times 6, 34 times 6. In this box, you're going to do... 34 times 20. And some of you guys could do this in your head. Some of you guys could probably do this to make this problem go a little faster. But if you can't, you can always just come over here and look. These are the first two boxes combined, those two products. So if you want to add those, you can. Um, or you can just come over to the side and multiply that again. But you're going to get these two answers combined. So 180 plus 24 would be actually 204. My twos keep looking like Zs. 204, and then in this box here, 34 times 2. If you just uh, do 34 times 2, which is 68, and then put that 0, that's 680, 680, uh, but that's just combining these two boxes here, 600 plus 80. Okay, there you go. Now, it doesn't say you really had to, uh, to solve this. We just had to write the expressions, but if you did solve this, uh, let's see, you would get a 4 in the 1's place, an 8 in the 10's place, and an 8 in the 100's place. 884 is the, is the answer to this. But you didn't actually have to find the answer. All right, last problem, number 2. It says solve using 4 partial products and then 2 partial products. Remember to think of terms of units as you solve it. So it's pretty much the same as the top. Um, so four, or excuse me, two ones times one one. That's going to be this box right here, which is going to be two. Uh, two ones times four tens. That's this box right here, which would be eighty. So I'm just going to just go ahead and line these up, so I don't have to do it again. And then on to uh, eight tens, which is this. Eight tens times one. Eight tens times one one is eighty. So I'm going to put eighty again. Eighty again. And then um, the last box is the largest box, which is going to be my largest value. We have 8 tens times 4 tens. 8 tens times 4 tens, which is 8 times 4, is going to be 32. And then we got two zeros there, 1, 2. So that's 0, 0, 2 in the hundreds place, a 3 in the thousands place. Okay? 
So notice that is 3,200. Two zeros, not 320. Okay, uh, two ones and 40. That's just these two boxes right here. Two ones times uh, 41 one. So what's 2 times 41? Most of you guys can do that. You're just doubling that number, which is 81. And you can see those, or excuse me, not 81, 82. Sorry, you're just doubling this number, doubling it, 42, double it, or excuse me, 41, double it, and you get 82. There you go, 82, 80 plus 2. And then this one, you're going to be adding these two values, these two values together. So go ahead and circle that just to show you. And that would be 3,002. Oh, that's not a 2. 3,000. What in the world? Let me get rid of that guy. So let me. There we go. 3,280. 3,002. That's just these two boxes combined. And if you did solve this problem, I'm, going, I'm just going to stack these a little neater because I didn't stack them very good. 2,000, or excuse me, 3,280 plus 82. Let's see what that is. We have a two in the ones place. A two in the one. I'm struggling with my twos today. Goodness gracious. Uh, two in the ones place, and then in the tens place, we have 16 tens. i got to regroup that. And a three in the hundreds place. I don't have anything to regroup in the thousands place, so just a 3,000. 3,362, 3, that is the product of uh, 41 times 82. There's the answer. Even though you didn't have to find the answer, you just had to basically do the partial products part. All right, so I like this. I like doing two partial products, but it's only people, only for people that can really see those values well, and is really, really good at multiplying. So, but definitely this using four partial products. I still do that even today. So there's nothing wrong with using four partial products. All right, guys, that's your weekly review. Have a great day, and see you. Bye.